Hi, welcome to Market Board Videos. Today's video is an introduction to chemistry and we're going to talk a little bit about physical and chemical properties and physical and chemical changes. So what is chemistry? Well, chemistry is the study of matter and its interaction. And so that begs the question, what's matter? I know you've heard people say to you, what's the matter? But they're not talking about matter in the scientific terms. Just like when we studied work, we said that if you study really hard for a long period of time, and you um, are done and let's say you're in your room and you go out and you go, wow, I just, I have worked so hard. But if you haven't moved an object through a distance, used a force to move an object through a distance, you've not done any work. And likewise, matter has a very specific scientific definition. So here's what it is. There are three things that are required in order for something to be considered matter. The first is it has to have mass. It doesn't have to have a very big mass, but it has to have mass. The second is it needs to take up space. Now that doesn't mean that there's not empty space in between, but that it has to take up some amount of volume. Again, it could be a very small volume, but it needs to take up volume. And the third thing is it has to exhibit inertia. Now remember, inertia is laziness of an object. So basically what that means is if something is not moving, it's perfectly contentious to stay at rest. And if something is in motion, it's perfectly contentious to keep moving. It doesn't want to change. It's kind of um, it's kind of difficult to make a change. So if something has mass, takes up space, and exhibits inertia, then it meets the scientific definition for matter, which is what chemistry studies. Now scientists like to find patterns and they like to organize things. It's one of the things that they do best. And so with matter, we are going to classify it according to a couple of different things. We may classify it according to its physical properties or its chemical properties. And let's discuss the difference about between those. Physical properties, chemical properties. Now, I'm going to use you as an example. So if for a minute you will um, bear with me and pretend like we can freeze you in time, okay? Just like you are right now. You're a certain height. That's a physical property. You're a certain weight. That's a physical property. You have a certain hair color. That's a physical property. Um, you have a certain shoe uh, size, the size of your foot. That's a physical property. Yeah, I know that in reality your weight's going to change, your hair color's going to change, your height's going to change if you're young or old. Um, but let's just say we're freezing you in time right now. Those are physical properties. They're things you can tell pretty much with your senses. So the state of an object, solid, liquid, or gas. Its melting point, its boiling point, its length, its mass, its volume. Its solubility or dissolvability. It's conductivity, will it conduct electricity? Malleability, malleability is a lot of one, one of those things a lot of people don't, don't really know what it is, so let me give you an example. If you took a Jolly Rancher candy, and you took a hammer to it and you started hitting it, it would shatter. It doesn't, it's not very malleable. Now take some Laffy Taffy, preferably banana, my favorite. We take some banana Laffy Taffy and we hit it with a hammer, and we can actually make that into a very thin sheet of Laffy Taffy, it's very malleable. So malleability is the ability of something to be hammered or, or pounded into a very thin sheet. And that's a physical property, just like your height is a physical property. Let's contrast that with chemical properties. Now we're going to take you again as an example to start out with. And this time we're going to talk a little bit about how you behave. So you behave a certain way when you're in a classroom. You behave a different way when you're with your parents or if you're older with your children. You behave a different way when you're with your friends. You behave in a certain way when you're with your siblings. And if you're a teenager or younger, you behave differently when you're with your siblings when your parents are around than when your parents aren't around. So depending on the environment you find yourself in, you behave a certain way. And that way changes depending on that environment. And that's what a chemical property is. It's the way something reacts with something else or the way something reacts in the presence of something else. So some of the keywords that you often find when you're looking at chemical property versus physical property, look for the word with or in the presence of. Now that's not a foolproof measure. It doesn't 100% of the time work. But if it says in the presence of a base, in the presence of an acid, um, you know that you're probably talking about a chemical property. Also, there are a list of physical properties. It's a finite list, so you can actually memorize those if you want. But again, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Physical properties, things you can see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. 
please don't taste anything in chemistry lab. And uh, chemical properties, how things react with one another. So now that we know how to classify them according to physical properties and chemical properties, the next thing we want to do is we want to look at physical changes and chemical changes. So physical changes and chemical changes. Let's start with physical changes. They're reversible. So what do I mean? I mean, if I took an ice cube and I let it melt, it would become liquid water. But if I froze that, I could turn it back into an ice cube. So it's reversible. Also, the characteristics don't change. Now, some of them change, like volume changes, that kind of thing. But in general, water is water is water. Whether it's an ice cube, or whether it's water, liquid water, or whether it's steam, it's still water, okay? Compare that to a chemical change. When you have a chemical change, you usually come out with something new. Let me give you an example. We have sodium. Sodium is a soft, silvery metal. Um, you can actually cut it with a plastic knife. But it is so highly reactive with water that if you put it in a, in just in the air, it'll pull the water out of the air and we'll have a, a small explosion. Well, depending on the amount of water and the amount of sodium, you're going to have a reaction, sometimes pretty nasty reaction. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is a green, noxious gas. Now, if you've ever went to shock your pool or add chlorine to your pool and you open up that big you know, five gallon bucket and you're not prepared and you get that face full of chlorine, your eyes watering, you cough, you try to catch your breath. That's nothing compared to real chlorine. So we take this green poisonous gas and we mix it with this silvery grayish metal that's going to explode if it's, if it's exposed to air. By the way, we keep sodium under kerosene or oil so that it doesn't do that. Put those two things together and you sprinkle it on your french fries and you eat it totally different characteristics. Of course, I'm talking about sodium chloride, which is table salt. But that's what I mean by a chemical change. You take these two things that are icky, put them together, and it's actually something that you need to survive in you know, certain quantities. So you have something new. Now there's, oh, and let's talk about reversibility. It's very, very difficult or impossible to reverse a chemical, uh, chemical reaction. Okay, really tough to do. So let's talk about evidence of a chemical reaction. How do you know a chemical reaction has occurred? Now, if you had the magic um, viewer of chemistry, you could just look and see what has happened. We don't have that, so we look for other signs. First of all, energy change. Lots of ways you can see energy change. Something could get hot or cold. Something could give off light. Maybe it has a glow, something like that. That's an energy change. A permanent color change. So it starts out yellow and it ends up black and it doesn't go back to yellow. It's not one of those oscillating clock reactions. I mean, it just, it goes black, okay? The change color, the color changes permanently. PPT stands for precipitate, and it's one of the coolest parts, in my opinion, of chemistry. You take two liquids and you put it together and you get a solid out of it. It's pretty neat. So you have some kind of solid that forms. And the last way is effervescence or bubbles or gases. Um, it's like an Alka-Seltzer tablet, you know, that fizzy, or like a, a pop, a Coke when you open it up and it fizzes. Um, that's evidence of a chemical reaction. Now, a Coke isn't because all you're doing is you're taking the carbon dioxide, you know, and, 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 and lowering the pressure, and so it increases the volume. It's a whole other area of chemistry and physics. But those are the things you look for. So the evidence of a chemical reaction, energy change, so hot or cold, permanent color change, precipitation forms, or it effervesces, it bubbles.